King oh on the river. Days, man. King on the river. We have set over set sickness. Candelari, who's got kings. Oh, boy. He might be kissing his chips goodbye. Three bet is to 60,000. With the blinds folding, the action's back on Bauman. Bauman might be tempted to slow play this pre-flop. Yep. She calls. And we go to the flop with 145,000 in the middle. Aces v Kings. The flop is Ace 7 Deuce. Candelari now has less than 1% equity. Another waste of a set. Action check to him. He has the pre flop betting lead. There's a board we're going to see him bet mostly. Obviously, if you're going to check a hand, one of the hands that makes the most sense to check is the Kings. But I wouldn't be surprised to see him bet on the small side either. 45k. Going to see Bowman call and a lot of check checks on the turn. It's going to be really hard for Bowman to get all the chips in here. Just not a lot of bluffs that you can float the flop with. And then want to bet big on the river. I mean, I guess the good thing is she starts the hand with not a ton of chips, so being all in is won't look super strange. She calls the 45k, and she's got roughly pot behind as we go to the turn, which is the nine of clubs. He checks again. Continues to slow play it. I think we're almost certainly going to see a check behind here from Candelari with the king and the king. Unless, of course, he wants to bet small himself to stop himself facing a huge bet on the river. Does he not see the ace, or...? Wow, 145k is a huge bet in this spot. Well, the problem is, if she shoves, he has to call. I mean, obviously, he can fold, but he's priced himself in. It's a very interesting spot for Bowman. If she calls, I mean, she always has an ace. He's never going to bluff the river, but when you shove the turn, your opponents should be folded mostly. Again, she just calls. It's a 95k behind. Tell you, does it open mock now? <laughs> like <laughs> more than half a million in the middle. We can see that Candelari is drawing dead. How are you ever winning here? Ever? Yeah, I think when you bet 145,000 on a turn here, your opponent's not going to call you at a worse hand very it's often. The driest board. King oh on the river, days. man. King on the river. We have set over set sickness. I guess Prague is the appropriate place for an icy cold decking. Candelari getting decked over here. She checks a third time. Candelari wants to see what she's got. It's not that much. And he's thinking, I can get all of it. <laughs> he can't. He shoves. She calls all in. Doubles up with a set of aces over a rivered set of kings. Officer, I'd like to report a murder. It looks like we got some playable hand shaping up here. With Brady's made it 5,000 with pocket sevens. Liebert's in, Bauman's in, and Heisenbelly. 
Going to take some pretty sweet pre-flop pot odds with his 10-4. Wow. Wow, yes, wow, yes, wow. Yes, The car crush you wanted. Yeah, here it is. Grandma got run over oh by a reindeer. My. What an awesome board to be able to continue on knowing someone's got to have a piece of this and what big pieces they have. Now you just got to keep it clean. It's going to be pretty tough for this to come clean, clean, so that you're confident with a set of sevens here. I was really hoping that Heisenberg would blast off with practically zero equity. <laughs> well, he still has the chance. Nope, he's going to get out of the way, and we're going to go three-way. What a net to the turn. That turn card oh is the eight of hearts. Oh, God. It's not clean. That is the nut flush for Gail Bauman, but both Liebart and O'Grady have redraws to houses. O'Grady does not have as many full house outs as he thinks. K7 would be interesting. Well, a wise man once said it's always coming seven. Actually, he wasn't a wise man. He was a slightly confused German. <laughs> a Weisenheimer, as we would say. Is that just a flat from Gale? Oh, you hate it. O'Grady oh, calls as well. So still three-way with 127k in the middle as we go to the river, which is the Ten of Hearts. Oh, action killer. Almost, almost a straight flush for Gail Bauman. You must yes. be looking at your set of sevens thinking, where did it all go wrong? Not raising the flop? No, he, he bet the flop. Oh, of course he did. He was the... He did everything he could. You can't stop him from coming. Yeah. But, yeah, this kind of feels like complete action killer. <laughs> With that check, he just emits defeat. Just it sounded like it. Yeah. You could just hear it in the volume of the thump. I mean, is there any chance that anyone's calling this bet? No chance Bart's calling. She wants to make it 75? Yeah, no. No one's calling. That's half of O'Grady's remaining stack. Still got Liebert to worry about. Like, I don't know what the math is on there being a one bigger heart out there, but it can't be good. But the nine, the ace, or the queen. Definitely not enjoying the situation. No, it's just so frustrating. A waste yeah. of a set. You know, you only get a certain number of sets in your life. Now you got to fold it. you got to fold it against an aggressive player who <coughs> would bluff here sometimes. I think in this exact situation, I don't think she's bluffing all that often. But when you see how aggressively Gail's been playing all day, it does make this decision a little bit tougher. Mm. 
and it goes check, check. Would she take a stab sometimes without a heart? Probably. Before Anana says Lex would call here. There's the fold. And Bart Lieber will also let his hand go. Ace high flop. Well, this is all Bauman. Although O'Grady has paired his queen. Somewhat interesting that he's electing to bet the queen jack four ways. Bauman will just be trying to navigate the showdown as cheaply as possible here. Unlikely to want to do too much big betting herself given there was four people on the flop. That all changes on the turn. Two of the pairs. Does not want to get the ch showdown so cheaply now. She would like to get the showdown expensively. I would imagine that O'Grady is going to reach for chips and not do what I thought. Betting. You thought he was going to check behind? Yeah, I thought he would check. I guess at this point, given that there was four people to the flop, and he's continuing on the turn, he's electing to potentially make Bauman fold an ace on the river. If he checks the river, I think it's a little bit peculiar. Obviously, Bauman very happy to call the turn now that she's improved the two pair. Now she's improved the three pair. <laughs> I think three pair should be two pair. Bauman wins. Aces and nines with the fives. Hold as a Gail Bauman. Oh, that's a nice hand. Pocket Kings. Such a beautiful hand. As, uh, as Fintan would call them, the Kevin Costners. Oh, come on. Don't do that to me. The Kevin Cleans, you love to see them. <laughs> Looks like Bowman's going to get a little bit tricky laying the trap. See if it works out. Pretty safe flop for Kings. Unfortunately for Bowman, neither player really picking up a whole lot. Yeah. Total bagalino for both the Ace Jack and the Queen Nine. Well, M does continue with Ace High. 8K. I think if Bowman flat of the hands like tens or jacks here, might be somewhat tempted to raise flop occasionally, but well, King's just going to be happy to continue laying the trap. Well, we got one fold on the flop. Lim no longer in the hand. And the turn card uh -oh. is a jack. So Im improves, in inverted commas. Yeah, not surprised to see her reaching for chips here. Was obviously bluffing the flop now with top pair, top kicker. Gonna be very happy to bet for what she feels is value. So 37 and a half in the middle and she bets 24. And she's got 53 behind. Is now the point where Gale gets aggressive? I think Bowman will be very tempted to just yeah. shove here with two flush draws on the board. If an opponent has picked up a jack or if an opponent has a hand like ace, queen of hearts, doesn't want to give a free card and potentially not get paid on the river, but also might be tempted to just keep laying the trap. But I think we're going to see a show here a reasonable amount of the time. Nope. Just a call. Saving it for the river, possibly. Let's see what comes. It's a 10. Bauman with a lock on this. 85 and a half in the middle, in with significantly less than pot behind. So dirty. I think either way, we're probably going to see all of the chips in the middle here. Does Im feel she can value bet? Does look like it. 
I like betting here because at least you can set your own price. I'd be very surprised if Bowman lets her away with this with Pocket Kings. With only 30k behind, I think we're probably going to see the all-in. Yeah. Just not... There's the all-in. Yeah, it's enough to put him all-in. It's one of those spots where there's so much in the pot. You've only got 30k left, but how is your opponent going to find a bluff here? I think your opponent can find a bluff. I mean... You can talk yourself into it with the two missed flush draws. She calls all in and she is out. Gail Bauman tables the Kings, or as Vincent calls them, the Kevin Kleins, after his favorite actor from A Fish Called Wanda. 